pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And those of you who are wearing masks or want to wear masks, feel free to do so. We're going to move things along pretty quickly tonight. We're not going to have presentations from uh, the staff. We have four folks out on COVID. And uh, so we're going to try to move things along very quickly and keep social distance. Just try to stay ahead of the curve, so to speak. <laughs> so with that, uh, do I uh, have a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of July the 27th and the special meeting of July the 12th, first the 27th? So moved. Ruth makes a motion to approve the minutes for the 27th. Do I have a second? Second. Those in favor? Unanimous. Did you get that? Ruth made the motion. Chase seconded. Thank you. And now about for the special meeting on the 12th. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Fitzwater approves. Do I have a second seconded by Todd? Those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. And also August the 10th, meeting on August the 10th. Do I have a motion to uh, accept those minutes? So moved. Todd made the motion to accept. Do I have a second by Brian? Those in favor? Thank you. Thank you very much. Board of Public Works and Safety meeting for uh, uh, July 1st, 15th, and 29th are in your packet for information purposes only. Yeah, we didn't have any minutes last week. That, that was so okay. We're, we're kind of catching up there. Okay. Very quick update on our projects at the city. We, uh, we had, as you all know, we have several. Our, our large $8 million waste treatment uh, upgrade project is well underway. We're having uh, construction meetings every, every other Friday here with the contractors and the engineering firm and uh, Marcus. And uh, at least one of our Board of Works members usually stops in, and the mayor and the clerk treasurer things are going on pretty well. We did have uh, some concerns. The contractor was having some issues with uh, subcontractors and getting materials. Some things were being backlogged. And, uh, Al Stong, the uh, president of Commonwealth, who has taken this project on as the project manager himself, um, got involved uh, things are starting to uh, move along there. Uh, we've had uh, a lid pulled off the digester out there for the first some of the first steps to be worked on, and that necessitated having a crane that would lift this building. I don't know some of you may have seen it out there, but it came out, lifted the lid off. It will come back when the, it's all taken care of. And, the new equipment's put in the digester and it will be replaced, but we are moving along. Uh, the other project out there that was, uh, th this project, if you remember, is financed through the Estate Revolving Fund. It's the program we're getting up alone. Uh, 20 years, Shana, is it 20 or 30? Uh, 20. 20. 20. <laughs> 20. 20. Right. 20. Well, the only reason I hesitate was because we had talked about the other one that would, would be third. We had, but yeah, it's kind, of, yeah, it's kind of where I was too, kind of uh, confusing. Uh, one and a half percent interest. So, basically free money for 20 years. So, it, we're very fortunate there. That, that's what's financing that $8 million project. Our, uh, our other project that we have going on out there was, uh, remember the whole building fell down? And uh, that was a, boy, a real mandate situation. Uh, couldn't handle the, uh, the humidity and such that's created by that environment over, over those uh, digesters. And uh, uh, the insurance company's been involved and they've done a great job. We've 
we're not going to have out of, any out of pocket to replace that out there. And right now, it looks like we're going to be able to build a structure that is a basically a greenhouse type of structure that's used in similar applications. So that that is also moving along pretty good, and that is also Commonwealth handling handling that project for us. Uh, we just uh, we're just concluding the Main Street revitalization program. Uh, that was a program that's taken about two years where the, where the uh, uh, owners of Billings downtown could participate uh, with some matching money and get some OPER funds to <coughs> upgrade the facade on their buildings, put in new windows, all sorts of things. And you, you've seen some of the changes that have gone on downtown. That program will, uh, OPER program will uh, come to its conclusion August 31st. Uh, there will still be a couple of punch list things left, basically uh, window uh, installation. Nine windows uh, affecting two buildings downtown will be put in at a later date, but they will be taken care of with the monies that are in the OPRA contract. Uh, surprise, surprise, windows are very hard to get, right? <laughs> Does that ring a bell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're hard to get. Yeah, so uh, we'll be delayed on that for a bit. But uh, the good news is most of the program is finished. So, and uh, that is Michiana Contracting that is taking care of that. Michiana Contracting are also the ones who uh, did the uh, uh, upgrading and painting of City Hall, uh, which desperately needed for a long time, and that. We have one other project left, and the local glass company has to install a new window. Drive up window and drawer. Yeah. yeah. Our, our drawer is seen better days. <laughs> yeah. The microphone, if anybody uses our drive up, you know either we can't hear you or you can't hear us or both. <laughs> exactly. So uh, we'll be, that will be a welcome replacement for sure. It will. It will. It will be nice. But boy, the, the, if you haven't taken a good look at the building, you need to. It looks really, really nice. Uh, the uh, uh, other aspect that Michiana is working on, on uh, September the 13th, they will start the installation of our downtown LED lights, the 27 lights going downtown. And uh, they are telling us they can install four, take down and install four of those uh, a day ambitious but I, they're telling us four a day and in two weeks they'll have it completed so we should have some breathing room before the uh, chili cook-off and red hot car show on the night uh, of course along with that will be the speakers that are being installed with the trailhead for the speaker system being a WROI and plugins available at different spots uh, to allow a DJ to remotely do something like the car shows DJ that they bring those also will start that same same week, the uh, 13th. Uh, Michiana is also, they have contracted to paint our traffic signal poles. Uh, same color to match our lights downtown. Lights will be LED and very, very, uh, you know, nice type of lighting. The bases will have more of an antique look to them. So it should look very, very nice. Uh, all of you have seen the NDOT project going on in uh, uh, Old 31 and, and, and 9 or at 14. Uh, that shall be uh, concluded here pretty soon. Uh, we're, uh, we're going to have a meeting uh, first of September with NDOT to discuss any issues that might have come up, punch list things, if you will, for that. The city's plan is in next year's paving program. Uh, we're wanting to take the rest of Main Street down uh, and uh, pave it the rest of the way then out to Monticello Road. And that will look, everything will look very nice after that's done and everything gets restriped. It looks pretty good with the new lights and it will look pretty good downtown. Plus the fact that some of those, the, the, the fronts downtown will be new and vibrant. Should look like a different Rochester. Again, Michiana Contracting is working on all of that. Michiana Contracting has been very, very good 
the MSRP program, part of the difficulty with it, we had to go at it three different times just to get contractors to bid on it. Uh, there wasn't enough meat on the bone, some of them thought, for a project. You know, contractors get a little uh, gidgy when they're taking on something that they don't know what's underneath it. And uh, Michiana has been very good. So, um, and holes, okay. Uh, Landon Good is finishing up the concrete work on the sidewalks downtown. It'll still pour tomorrow. So, Ruth, you'll have that big hole gone tomorrow. Okay. Oh good. <laughs> I know. I know that's been a tough thing to deal with. But, but, but it'll still be protected. They did a really did a good job. He did a nice job of yeah. securing it, didn't he? Well, yeah. well, no, on the other side, it's really nice. Oh, the nice other side looks beautiful. Good. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's gorgeous. Well, he told me on two sides. He thought he had one that would be real good. Okay. <laughs> My sides. <son's laughs> kind of used to that. <laughs> no, no, he'll do, he'll do a great yeah. job with it. Yeah, they did good. So that, that should be finishing up here within the week. Um, the uh, School View lift station is uh, on schedule. Uh, we have a contractor out of the Mishawaka area, TGB, that's doing that. Uh, interesting company, uh, owned by two brothers who were veterans, and 85% of their workforce is veterans. Yeah, yeah, great company, doing, doing some good stuff. Uh, they ran into one difficulty out there, you know they're moving a lot of dirt, <laughs> a lot of dirt. Uh, they're going down 30 feet, and uh, they found a tile out there that it was, water was just flowing out of it. They didn't know whose it was, what it was, no records anywhere, nothing at the county. The surveyor had nothing, nothing anywhere. Somebody has just thrown a tile in out there. Uh, but uh, it looks like it's very uh, uh, much necessary for the farm ground to keep it drained out there. So uh, we had a a meeting early one morning after it was found and uh, had uh, Dr. Hoffman here who owns the property and the common wealth engineering folks, or I, I'm sorry, uh, HWC, John Query, engineering folks were involved with that and uh, the TGB folks and within 40 minutes we worked out a solution and Dr. Hoff helped, helped out with this a lot. He allowed more of his property out there to be approached on so that we could loop the system and keep it running while we did our work. And then when it's done, we'll put it back the way it was. Because it was just running water right into where we had to do our construction. So that, that's going on pretty well. That's the only rough pickup they found, but we didn't lose one day. So that's moving on pretty good. And we're still looking, Rick, at uh, middle, middle to late October. Um, we have uh, uh, USI, the engineering firm, uh, we've contracted them to put together a plan for uh, Apache Drive, which is the street that would uh, connect the area out there where Schnabel Tier is located going to the, uh, uh, to the north with Highway 14. There were always some plans to do that, but never an official, uh, official plan such so we're having that put together and hopefully next year's community <coughs> crossing offerings we'll be able to uh, take advantage of that and start that project. Uh, I'm sure many of you have heard that the park board is uh, delved into with some uh, private folks who uh, wanted to step up and, and, and sponsor this splash pad for our main park and uh, there's been uh, uh, some construction uh, donation for that, uh, and uh, there's private funds being raised for that. The city's contribution uh, was through the water board. Uh, free water, right? Right, Lloyd? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Free water to, to, to make the splash pad go. And yes. property. 
Pardon me. And property. And, well, of course, and the property. <laughs> it can't be moved. It, no. <laughs> and then, you know, it's like any other uh, private venture. Uh, Manitow Mountain, those of you who remember Manitow Mountain, that was a public venture and built by the public and then turned over to the city for maintenance. And by the way, we, uh, how old's uh, Manitow Mountain? Nine. Six or seven? Seven, oh, seven, so, mid nineties. We'll, we'll yes. go with that. Yeah. Uh, we had a consultant in here with who uh, is an expert for ADA uh, playground equipment, which we're going to make a substantial investment and move forward with some different playground equipment in our main park. And uh, uh, her comment was, you know, we see a lot of these Manitoba Mountain kinds of projects but we never see any of this old, this well-maintained. And it does look pretty good out there. It, uh, just finished uh, redoing the whole thing and putting in the uh, rubber mulch, which has been very, very nice. So that, that's happening out there. Uh, on the other side of town, in, in the park department's world, a pickle, four pickleball courts are going in uh, behind the uh, swimming pool where the old parking lot was located. Uh, the parking lot was utilized quite a bit when the pro shop was over there and it has not been utilized since. We're not talking about the parking lot right, that butts right up to the golf course but the one behind it. And uh, it's just right for, for that and we're going ahead and having it paved along during our paving project for the year to, to move forward so that the folks who want to invest in that will have a place to put their monies to, to build the pickleball courts. So that's going on. Also, it's another public uh, venture. It's, you know, I had one gentleman in here the other day saying, you know, there, there are people who are anxious to contribute to this because they want to make sure they can say, we, we, we help make that thing. We help build that thing. We saw the same kind of passion and interest in Rochester when we did the 9th Main Street Park. That was all right, private donation for the most part. Uh, we just completed uh, uh, a new upgrade and uh, much needed uh, electrical and control uh, change out to our irrigation system out of the golf course. It's been <coughs> limited for about seven years after it got struck by lightning several years ago. And uh, uh, we kind of got smart. We decided that, you know, that's kind of like a lift station a lot. So we got our folks involved now who uh, are uh, involved in helping us keep our 16 lift stations with our waste treatment plant in order. They're, they've been pulled into this with our irrigation station. So we've gotten it upgraded and electricals upgraded. It is now fully protected uh, from lightning and such. And we can breathe easier there. I mean, that goes out. You don't get any water on the golf course. That's kind of tough these days. So that's that's gone on. Uh, that's a that's a very quick rundown. Uh, we have a couple other projects where there isn't work going on yet, but we are doing uh, the due diligence, the design work, and such. We're having a new salt barn built out of the uh, street department. Our salt barn was in dire need of some help, as you know, Rick. Those things take a beat. It's a lot of weight and everything. <coughs> So we're, we're having a new, new uh, barn structure put together. It's going to take a lot of concrete and such, but it'll last a long, long time. And uh, we've got a street department expansion over at the Forest Farms old building. Some new siding and such. Doing some upgrades over there. That, that's going on right now. Uh, we're in uh, conversations with uh, Republic, the landfill. Uh, talking about uh, a forced main, basically a pipeline from their place to, uh, to our waste treatment plant so they can send the leach in the pipeline rather than truck it to us. They have been trucking it to us. We started that the first of the year. And that last look it was 90 million gallons of leach in the process this, this last year. Uh, once do something with a transmission line which they are uh, 
it's th they're talking to us about paying for it themselves, and then like like any other uh, development program that uh, any construction <coughs> people would do or uh, builders. So once they put the infrastructure in place, then they dedicate it over to the city, and we end up maintaining it. So we're in conversations with that. That would uh, make the leaching process go up to about 12 to 15 million gallons. So uh, that is in process right now. We have also uh, some research being done uh, to uh, complete a water system model. Uh, we've had some conversations with folks in the foundry about the water tower over there just north of the foundry. We're taking a look at what it would take to potentially relocate that. And that takes an engineering study. You just don't pick those up. So there's a lot on the plate right now. A lot going on. We're seeing some fruits of our labors. Uh, nothing happens real fast, though. Anybody have any questions? Being said, um, I would entertain a motion to uh, open the public hearing regarding the 2022 budget. Do I have a motion to open? So Been moved by Councilman Garrett. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Fitzwater. And those in favor, to open the public meeting. And it's unanimous. Public meeting is now open. Uh, <coughs> turn it over to Eric. No. no. Not for the budget. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hey, go ahead, Eric. Here. I'll hand it to you. That's why you're in the chat. I'll pass the ball back to you just a little bit. Now, okay. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Isn't he with Baker Tilly? He is. Okay. You didn't oh, contract him? I did not. <laughs> oh, okay. I remember those days. <laughs> There's a reason he's wearing a jacket now. <laughs> I remember those days. We don't do that anymore. No, we yeah. don't do that. Yeah. Uh, but no, actually, uh, you will be hearing from Eric shortly in the next public hearing. No, tonight is just our public hearing uh, with our notice to taxpayers that was put out and to have our first reading for the budget. Uh, there's been the only update that I have is that when I met with the DLGF, we did shift our levy a little bit to make sure that we had everybody covered and we are going to be walking in with more than 20% operating balances for all of our tax supported funds. So um, I did have to shift, I took some of it, I, we'd normally put most of it into the general fund because obviously that's our largest fund, but the MBH and parks both have some work. They, they had a little extra expense going into next year because of equipment needs, obviously some infrastructure needs. So we just shifted the levy a little bit. We're taking a little less at the general, giving those guys a little bit more. We're still gonna be over, I, I think it was close to 30% across the board um, average. So we're still doing well. I, we, this is one of those times where we just don't know where our income tax monies are gonna end up because of with COVID in the last 18 months or so. There's gonna be, I think, some, some decline in that regard moving into next year. So that'll impact us just a little bit, but our cash reserves are very comfortable right now, so we should be okay affording all of our budget requests. And so with that said, our proposed, um, oh, did I grab the wrong one? I probably did. Uh, you have in front of you the notice to taxpayers, which has our levy percentage differences. So in your packet, our general fund <coughs> decreased it by 33.79% we increased MVH 36.99, uh, cumulative fire state, it went up about 0.52, but that is a calculation based on a cumulative fund that's calculated at the state level. So that wasn't anything, we didn't add any more to it or take anything away. The parks, that one went up, the more, most significantly, that one went up by 96.76% of the levy. And uh, CCD, again, that's a calculation by the state. That's not something that we do. 
So overall, I think the total increase for the levy went up from um, our maximum levy was 33.12707, and our current tax levy is 31.98.84. So not quite 200,000. So I'd say we're pretty well holding steady. Uh, our biggest increases have been salaries. That's usually where we try to, and we have the guys shave back, so when we meet with department heads, as you guys were here for the department head requests. So that's all I have for that, unless there's public comment or questions. Any comments from uh, council? <clears throat> I, would, I would state that, uh, just an opinion, but I, I think it's gonna be something that's gonna be part of the process. Uh, the wage situation is going to continue to get a lot of scrutiny. The, the, the way the labor situation is not only locally but everywhere. Um, just, just an observation. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Kind of in the same conversation, we will be bringing, or I'll be bringing the salary ordinance to you guys, and I think. Uh, Ted and I are going to have to sit down and really scrutinize that moving into next year for that reason. So the budget, we tried to make sure that we were going to cover any changes that we might make in that regard um, ahead of time. So hopefully we've got that well covered in the budget, whatever that looks like and whatever conversation we have with the salary ordinance for uh, next month. No comments? Uh -huh. Thank you. Any comments from the public? Okay. Um, we should have the first reading then. I uh, move to close. I'll oh, move to close. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Do I have a move to close the public meeting? So moved. Oh, sorry. Fitzwater moved and uh, Garrett seconded. Those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. Public meeting is closed. Now I would entertain a motion for the uh, first reading of uh, the 2022 uh, budget. So moved. Okay. Sorry, Todd moved and John said that. Hang on. I just got a copy of it. Well, that's what I was looking for. I left it lay on my desk. Ordinance 11 2021, and this will be the budget for the 2022 beginning January 1st, 2022, and running through December 31st, 2022. For the general fund, or excuse me, for the Casino Riverboat Fund, the budget estimates 136,000, rainy days 200,000, general fund is 3,651,150, fire pension is 36,400. Police pension, 88,200. Local road and street, 125,000. Motor vehicle highway, 1,395,700. Cumulative fire, 50,000. Parks general is 1,091,100. Cumulative capital improvement is 76,000. Cumulative capital development, 315,000. Economic development, 350,000. Redevelopment general, 246,500. Low at public safety, 297,000. Drug interdiction and investigation, 10,000. City ordinance, 10,000. Non-reverting park operating, 102,800. Non-reverting park capital improvement, 310,000. Police continuing ed, 10,000. DEA asset recovery, 20,000. Meadow Creek maintenance, 22,000. Uh, state grants fund, 920,000. Federal grants fund, 800,000. For a total of ten million two hundred sixty-two thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars, and of those, the ones that are tax levied are general, MVH or motor vehicle highway, cumulative fire, park, cumulative capital development. Right. Yeah, a lot of people get uh, confused over the utilities. The utilities are not tax supported. Correct. Well, we have a lot of home rule funds that are not tax supported as well. Um, any just 
discussion, if not the first read. I would entertain. Actually, it'd be the second reading. Oh, I'm sorry. Page. That was the second. Introduction was last month. I would entertain a motion for the uh, third reading by title only. So moved. No, sorry. Moved by Wilson, seconded by Garrett. Those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, Shadi, could you do the third reading for us? By sure. Title only. Ordinance 11 2021. 2022 budget. Those did, titles are pretty simple. <laughs> you, did that, you did that well. Right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like you just did the second one too, so that was very good. Any discussion? I have a motion to approve 11 uh, 2021. Ruth's made the motion. Wilson seconded. Those in favor? And it's passed. Thank you. Okay. Now I think we can bring Eric into the program. Yes, now it's Eric's turn. We've got uh, <laughs> Ordinance 10 2021, amending water rates. <coughs> it's presented, I believe we have a water board member here tonight as well, Lloyd Jennings. Nice to have you here, Lloyd. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, yeah, we'll have to open a public hearing as well for this. I have a motion for that. Second. 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 Motion. I fit water second by Thompson. Those in favor? Okay. Public meeting is now open. Okay. You like to explain what's going on? I mean, first of all, I'd like to say that the new Sentinel was. Did you read the new Sentinel article? Yeah, I was sent a copy, so hopefully I can. Say a few things I can maybe clear clear it clear that yeah. up. There was some, yeah mis misconceptions there. Yep. Um, Eric Walsh, Baker Tilly, good to be back in front of you again uh, tonight. I'll be pretty brief for the public hearing, but in terms of some of the things in that article, but what you're seeing before you is a full ordinance, several changes, but a lot of this is really just cleaning up some old uh, language as well as updating some of your miscellaneous fees and charges within the water utility. I think the biggest thing to make sure to understand is for current in-city residential customers there's no rate adjustment at all for them the current rates for in-city customers are staying the same so nothing is changing there um, the changes to the ordinance so i'll kind of go through the laundry list are meter deposits will be increasing uh, to give you an idea of what they're increasing by a residential meter deposit will be going up 15 dollars that's prospectively, so if you've already got a meter deposit on the books, et cetera, it's just if you go in and have to put a new meter deposit in, that's the increase there. Um, there is a system development charge being proposed, similar to what you already have in wastewater. This is new construction only, so this does not affect any current houses, et cetera, businesses in, in the city. So if a new residential home uh, is built and then taps into the water utility, typically that would be a 5 8 inch water meter that home would pay a $500 one-time system development charge. What system development charges, just as you have for wastewater are used for, or it's really growth paying for growth. As you continue to have growth, you have to reinvest into your system, expand it, have more capacity, et cetera. So those, do those dollars as new developments are done, businesses tap on, et cetera, those dollars are then used for that expansion down the road. If I could interrupt and interject, what we found out in going through this uh, study, this due diligence, uh, there have been a lot of changes in the Rochester uh, persona, if you will, over the years. There was very little development. We didn't uh, have a south end of town that was bringing in a pilot or a wings or a Starbucks, some of the other things that we've seen crop up out there. And uh, when these people uh, come to us for the development process, they'd ask what it would cost for sewer and water hook up. We'd tell them years would just use the hookup and they'd say no 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 no. we want to know what it's going to cost us say, no, it's you know a thousand dollars or five hundred whatever the case may be yeah uh, you're missing the boat uh, we don't put we haven't put anything in anywhere that it wasn't at least four thousand dollars for a development fee development charge when your businesses and industries are coming on board so I just wanted to throw that out. We have been a little behind in that academic world. 
in the mayor had an example of you know five eight centimeter is typical residential they're going to pay 500 per house that would hook up for instance like a wings or a, a commercial property that may be like a two inch meter um, a two inch meter and this is based on capacity they would pay four thousand dollars for that hookup so the larger your water meter obviously the more capacity you can draw out of the system so the larger your fee to hook in very common many many communities throughout the state of indiana have similar charges it's really growth paying for future growth the fourth item that's changing in your ordinance is the service charges and i don't know Derek, if you want to speak to all of any of this but it's really just doubling your current basic call out rate if it's after hours or on the weekends because you want to speak to that because you pay overtime. yeah we pay overtime uh, minimum two hour call out for our guys to go out for anything that's after hours or on the weekends so it's really just updating the fees to catch up to that where currently if it's within hours it's twenty dollars for the call out if it's after hours weekends it goes to the forty dollars the fifth change is your sprinkler rates so this would only affect commercial and for commercial properties that have a sprinkler system currently right now the rate is the same for every sprinkler size you have sprinklers ranging in size from two, to ten. two inches to ten inches um, American Water Works Association puts out really rate making principles nationwide. Uh, sprinklers work the same as a um, meter that the larger your sprinkler system, the more capacity you can draw out of the system. No one ever wants to use a sprinkler system, but your water system has to be sized large enough that if the 10 inch sprinkler, there's a fire, it can fight that fire and send the gallons per minute needed. So you would almost always, well, you would see if you keep cost of service principles, a larger sprinkler system would have a higher rate than a smaller sprinkler system that probably makes common sense to most people your rate right now is regardless of your your sprinkler system you're paying 354 dollars uh, a year for that this change is to now be based on the awwa principles american water Works association where based on your size you pay a capacity per, or a percentage higher based on the capacity you're drawing so to give you an example a four inch sprinkler system which you have three of those in the city their charge will go from $354 a year down to $207 a year. They actually get a decrease in that. If you are a six inch sprinkler system, which is the majority of yours, you have 27 of those in city limits. Right now they're paying $354 a year. Those commercial properties now will pay $600 a year. Again, that's based on that capacity variable. Um, your largest one, which you have two of them that are at 10 inch sprinkler systems, two of the industrials, they will be going to $2,300 per year versus the 354. That shows you kind of how much the discrepancy really was based on the capacity of their ability to draw versus what they've been paying historically. And then the final change is for outside city customers, similar to what you already have in the wastewater, there will be a rate differential now as allowed by state statute. So the outside city customers will pay, be paying approximately 14% higher than the inside city customers. What that equates to is someone that's a minimum bill outside the city, it's a $1.73 increase per month for that outside city biller. Again, does not change anything in the inside city rates, this is outside only. An average residential home outside city limits probably uses somewhere between four and 6,000 gallons per month. They would see their bill, water only, go up about $2.50 to $3 a month based on this differential. Again, this is a common practice throughout the state of Indiana. It's really based on the principle that without the city and city government, there is no municipal utilities. Well, anyone outside of city limits pays no city taxes, et cetera. So that's why there's allowable for these differentials on your utility bills, because people inside the city that pay city property taxes, that goes to pay things like overhead costs, salaries, wages related to the whole city working. And without the city being here, you wouldn't have any utilities to provide those outside city customers in the first place. So I'll kind of circle back where I started in just to clear up some things. No rate adjustment to inside city water customers. Very good. This morning. Council, any other questions? Okay. I'd open it up to public. Anybody have any questions or comments? Yeah, I, I just add, and I think you hit it pretty well the outside the city increase rates. Yeah, they're not paying city taxes receiving some of the city benefits though in the form of the utilities so you know either you either have the uh, 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 a fee for that which we're now implementing or you're annexed one of the ones uh okay if there are no questions i would entertain a motion
motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Fitzwater's moved. Wilson seconded. Those in favor? Okay. Four to zero. Uh, do I have a motion for the first reading of ordinance 10 days 2021? Ted, forgive me. Um, I was looking at the wrong line item on the ordinance. Before you move into the water rate, that one you have already, that was the one that you did the first reading. That, last that time. we had the first reading. The budget. Reading. What okay. I need to do is we need to have the council vacate the vote on the budget, and then uh, we will have we will make amend this to be the first reading, and then we will bring back for final vote on the budget ordinance in, at the September's meeting. I flip flop my notes on here, so that's I was looking at second, third reading, but it was for the water ordinance. So I apologize. Um, it's the 24th. <laughs> I know where he's going. It's the day I one mistake <laughs> on August the 24th. Uh, well, I want that recorded. See what I have to yes. put up with, Rick? <laughs> it is so rare, you know. But I own it. I made a mistake. So. Thank I you. do. I, I will stand up and say I, I wholly apologize for that. So if you could, if somebody would make a motion to vacate the vote vacate and the, change uh, this to be the first reading the budget, on the budget, budget hearing vote. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, motion motion to vacate and change the second reading to the first reading. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a motion on the uh, budget uh, hearing vote to vacate it and change the first reading to the second? So moved. Second. Moved by Garrett, seconded by Todd. Those in favor of doing that, okay. And then we will have the third reading at the next. next yes, in September and and the vote. Clarification for for the water that we are reading. That one is the second and third reading for tonight. That's right. Yes, we did tonight. the first reading okay. last. We time. had the first reading. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do I have a motion and moving along? Thank you for admitting to that. You're welcome. Study clearing. I'll bust your chops <laughs> for sure. <laughs> we had one last year too, didn't we? Yeah. One mistake. Yeah. Uh, well, last year we just don't want to talk. About it. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a motion for uh, the second reading of ordinance 10 days 2021, amending the water rates by by title only? Wilson makes the motions. Chase uh, seconds it. Those in favor. Unanimous. Okay, Shadi, you want to read that one as well? Title only, sure. <clears throat> By title only. Ordinance number 10 2021, an ordinance regarding water rates and fees. Okay. Do I have a motion to? Uh, well, is there any, any discussion? Discussion. Any discussion? Okay, discussion. Okay, do I have a motion to suspend the rules and have the third reading of 10 2021? By title only. <laughs> okay, my dad, you're, you're, you're helping her out. Oh, that's great. Thank Good you, out. Brian. Oh, boy. My title only. Do we have a move by Wilson, seconded by Fitzwater? You two got a Okay. Yeah. All right, those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. My title only. Chuck? Yes. Ordinance number 10 2021, an ordinance regarding water rates and fees. Okay. And do I have a motion to approve 10-2021? Mm -hmm. Ruth makes the motion. Second. Seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor? Thank you all. Now we're all we're all clean on all that now, right? Okay. Thank you. You betcha. Okay. Uh, we uh, move right now. We do not have the department heads here tonight for any reports. Uh, missed it beginning of the meeting. We have four of our staff out with COVID. So it's a, that's a pretty big chunk out of our group. So is it Derek here? Is that the patient? Uh, Derek's not sick. And he's not. No, it's not a patient. Yeah. Not on vacation. He's not on vacation. Actually, yeah. That's I don't know where Brian was. Brian, that's supposed to be my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah. He can't have vacation for at least two months now. He's running uh, three departments, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, did you know that? <laughs> no, but I'll help if you need. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's not really a laughable matter. We have some pretty sick people right now, so. Uh, without getting into the names or anything, just please keep them in your prayers, if you will. This is serious stuff. 
Um, okay, we've got some Ted, committee. If I may interrupt you, you skipped something under communications. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. The discussion for the ARPA funds. Because oh, you I wanted to. Oh, I don't have that on my notes. Yeah, we did. Well, I asked you if you wanted to. I thought I'd give you an entire Yes. Yeah, okay. The, uh, under communications, the ARPA request and set a date for study session to formalize the plan, uh, which we'll need to include Eric with, I believe, or I would feel more comfortable with, let me put it that way. Um, first of all, uh, we had a COVID call on Friday, and one of the conversations we had was helping with the, we at our conversation we met, one of the things we talked about was helping out the health department, but we don't have a health department. Well, it seems that there may be a need. So Ted had suggested, and I did not get that letter print. I only needed it for claims. Uh, one of the things that we talked I about forwarded would, it to okay, would be to utilize 50,000 of that and um, the ARPA donate, funds. of the ARPA funds and uh, donate that to the Polk County Health Department. Now, we have an appropriation available in one of our funds out of the Riverboat Fund that I can go ahead and, and write that check this week if you approve that and then when we actually formalize our plan for the ARP money we'll make sure that we include that as a line item because that has to be identified in our plan before we can actually spend it out of the ARPA fund itself so I can't cut any any monies out of that fund until we have a plan that is voted on approved passed and stamped so uh, well, but we do have available funds that we can use if you the council feels that that is appropriate to utilize those funds for that now and then we can replenish that fund. What we found on the call last week and Rick was part of it as well. There's a real need for some testing. These two ladies are from the health department too. Okay. Oh my well. gosh, you didn't recognize it with your Missy pants and on. Oh, no, 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 no. No. oh wow. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you guys. Seriously, thank, thank you. you. We really Don, you've been at it for a while. Misty, I'm Don. <laughs> Ted. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have his glasses on. Listen, I don't have my glasses on, and uh, I, I'm a little vain, so I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see either one of you. I'm just going by you. Know, <laughs> really appreciate it. We really do, you guys. You know, the uh, I'm just going to give you a pat on the back while you're here. Over at the senior center, when you were running the uh, vac vaccination process. I don't know that I've ever seen a smoother setup. You guys did a very fine job. And we found out at our uh, meeting last week that there is a need for testing. Uh, the drugstores and everything, periodically they're running out of kids. You've got a backlog of people that need to be tested. Hospital will test people if they have a doctor's order. So there's a real need, and uh, it was suggested that the uh, uh, drive-through be set up again, you know, that we had on the south end of town for a time period. Uh, were, were you able to get the same facility lined up? Um, right now, we are kind of up in the air. It is allowed, and, and we've gotten the blessing there, yes. Thank you to Jim Streeter. Yes. yes. I yes. think so. he, yes. Was, yes. he was first yes. and foremost ready to do that. Um, but as the state is talking, they, they're thinking that we may have to transition things into a, a vaccination site as well. And I'm just not so sure that that location is going to be able to accommodate both testing and vaccination. Well, so, I talked to Dr. Rayburn over the weekend about coming to the council and asking for 50,000 of our ARPA funds, which by the way, folks, you know, the state throws us money at you for COVID. There's no better reason for spending it than, than this. I mean, this is directly helping our community. And uh, so he was telling me that uh, the last test site, it was about $38,000 to run the whole thing. This would leave an extra 12 for some extra personnel that might be needed and maybe transforming that into the, the shot program as well. So that, uh, that's where this suggestion has come from. We didn't have anything definitively uh, for the money, so when we had our meeting the other day, so I think it would be with us to participate. We, 
know, the county picked up the tab for everything the last time. We uh, certainly benefited by the city residents being able to be tested. Uh, just, just for information purposes, how many people, uh, what percentage of the county is uh, inoculated? Now? We're about 40%. 40%. And the state average, 50, maybe? 53%. 53%. OK. Yeah. Not, not too far off. But uh, at any rate, I uh, sent you folks the letter and I entertained some conversation about it. I agree wholeheartedly. I know that Miami and uh, Kosciuszko all health departments says just do that. I talk to people about it, and they all could use extra funding. And, and I think it's a good idea to get. I think it's a good idea to get started. Get some money out there, get some testing done, shots opening, some quick tests, and whatever they can need, whatever they can use it for. Well, you know, and John, like uh, I say, it's a it's a good way to spend that money. Our personal situation here: one of our folks that's now home sick and recovered had to go to North Manchester yeah. to be tested. We went to the drugstore and weren't available and couldn't get in the hospital without a doctor's order. So we just ended up going to uh, North Manchester. Yep. So, you know, we need to jump in the water. Yep. I know people that have had to travel quite a distance for it also. And it's, yeah, I'm all for it. The other, the other thing, too, that uh, we found out with our, with our own uh, experience here is just as soon as you find out what you have, they can start that protocol and you start start getting well. So, <coughs> so. any other motion? Shall I make a motion? <laughs> Go right ahead. I'll make a motion right that ahead. we do donate fifty thousand dollars. The way Sean stipulated it earlier. <coughs> now and then take it take it from the our riverboat fund yes, for now. For, for this for temporarily, you know. Okay. Yep. I know what I said, so I'll put it in the minute. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> that is my vote. Okay. Do, do we have a it's second? All second it, seconded it by Fitzwater. Those in favor? Yeah, it's unanimous. Thank you, folks. It's a, it's a no-brainer. It really is. Again, ladies, thank you very much. Do you have anything else you'd like to tell us? No? Keep us in your prayers. <laughs> oh, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Shada, for bringing me back, even though it wasn't on my agenda. Well, I laid one up there for you, but you all played musical chairs. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get an agenda because yeah, he did. wasn't here. You know, it's one thing about Shada, she never makes many mistakes, but what she does, she always has a reason. <laughs> Thanks, Shada. You're welcome. Okay. We don't have a downtown partnership. We don't have a Lake Manitou Association. Ruth area finance commission the county thing report on the line. Um North Shore State asked if they could replant their um, their design because they had to widen the uh, water retention for them. I don't need to which then eliminated a place to put a house. They built so so and then instead of having an inconsistent number we flat it so the numbers can be consistent so and, and we have heard okay. we had a small discussion about it it might be a little more fun for you to explain why the numbers were missing but the numbers were concurrent we did <laughs> yeah yeah that was the thing that was actually, um, and then we had uh, Mr. Russell talk. Mr. Phillips. Phillips. Uh -huh. Russell Phillips, yeah. He uh, wanted to put his opinion about uh, doing uh, solar energy and allowing only a certain amount in and wanted us to at least think about it. Okay. And then apparently the Nickel Plate Trail in other counties has had issues with people taking the things there by the, the uh, road and, and recycling them, taking them off, you know, so that you know that a road is coming. And oh, some other yeah. counties, yeah, some other counties have taken them off. We haven't, that we know of, we haven't yet had that problem in our counties where people have actually 
stolen them or, or money. Uh, but uh, if that was to happen, they wanted to know their protocol to, you know, where, where, how do I start if we wanted to remove that? So they asked for advice of that. So, would that be it? You know, it, it, the, the rabbit trail here to make a statement. This is a crazy world we're in. You know, our uh, our service organization, the Legion and the VFW, had to quit putting metal markers on the veterans' graves because they were being stolen to recycle. They've had to go to a plastic. This is a crazy world. Yeah. Thanks, Ruth. Goodman's not here. Fedco report. Terry, you want to sure. take that? Yeah. Um, been relatively busy lately. Um, we did um, make the decisions on the opener COVID grant. So we had two hundred eighteen thousand five hundred dollars that went to. It was a twenty-six or twenty-four. We'll be going to twenty-six or twenty-seven small businesses, restaurants, um, mom and pop businesses uh, mostly. Uh, we had twenty-six or twenty-seven businesses awarded. Uh, we're still waiting on the hurdles from over to get the actual funds and get those dispersed but we're hoping that's before the end of the month um, uh, talk to eight, eight other small businesses including Verizon and Dollar General um, Verizon's looking to put a shop here on the south end of town John Dollar General is looking at a couple different locations in the county um, Rochester Metal Products a potential expansion there I know you're working with the company on that uh, alongside myself so a real great conversation with Mr. Percy mm -hmm. over the city infrastructure, so a, a big deal looming there. A uh, business in from uh, North Carolina yesterday looking at two local buildings, the Wabash Avenue building and the Acuma building. They seem to be most interested in the Wabash building because of the rail access. Um, a, a lead from Indianapolis on uh, that same building, the Wabash Avenue building, uh, for a um, cryptocurrency mining operation uh, because of the adjacent uh, uh, Duke power line. Um, the Georgia company, uh, again, Ted and I have been working on that one. They're kind of in a holding pattern right now. Uh, the new guy, after working with one rep predominantly for about four months, the new guy uh, is out with COVID now in the oh, hospital, no actually. Kid. Oh, boy. Ryan. Yeah. Ryan, yeah. Yeah, I talked to um, uh, Joe today. Um, but if their item permit issues are cleared up with the state of Indiana, um, it, uh, Joe didn't think that's going to be too onerous for them. They're still waiting for some information. Looks like Rochester's their first uh, spot, their first choice for landing in the state of Indiana. D does he have any idea, Terry, that there could be a potential to lose that building? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And he mentioned he understands that. I made him aware of that maybe a couple weeks ago when the North Carolina company had called about it. Um, interesting, it's actually a company that I talked to three years ago that was looking at the defense building. Um, and he said, that's, that's fine, Rochester's still our first choice, and um, we're six months out. If there's nothing available, we look at possibly putting up a new building so they're operation here. Great, super. The, the Ready Grant Program, that's a, uh, Regional Economic Acceleration and Development Initiative, Indiana Economic Development Corporation has put out $500 million uh, to award 10 regions up to $50 million uh, to bring in up to uh, additional $150 million in private investment. Um, top 25 projects in uh, right now uh, from Fulton County include uh, uh, a sewer extension uh, for housing development and then also water and sewer for hotel and apartments uh, on the south end of the city. Just got the uh, plan from the developer on the hotel uh, yesterday. Um, met with the landowners on that and uh, haven't followed up with the developer yet, but intend to hopefully tomorrow. Uh, pretty big project, including some apartments, uh, some new retail spaces, and um, hospitality space of the hotel. Um, a lot of other projects discussed there. Uh, there's a list as long as my arm of workforce development initiatives. Um, the Boat uh, Tech Center at uh, Rochester Schools Learning Center was in our project list. It looks like it's probably funded otherwise. Um, I think the theater made the list. Um, I think that was it from, from 
Fulton County. Um, Blackbird Drive sorting through the water uh, bids to extend water for service. We did receive um, REMC, Fulton County REMC did receive the grant from USDA that would then turn into a loan to FEDCO that would cover the cost, almost cover the cost of the road and the water extension. Uh, got one uh, buyer out of Elkhart County, hopefully a buyer, buyer or prospect that's looking at probably two lots, which would really help us narrow the gap on what we're gonna need to make sure we get that water and, and road in paved uh, this year, um, likely by the end of September, early October, if we can move the money that quickly. Um, and then one other local company that's looking at potential building um, at Black or, or uh, taking most of my time lately. So just a quick update on a few projects. Any questions or the development south of town with the hotel and the apartment situation? Any time frame on that? Um, I, again, I haven't talked to the developer just yet. The landowners are still jockeying back and forth on whether they're going to uh, sell the land or possibly include the land and some cash as a partnership. So a few wrinkles to be uh, ironed out, I think, as soon as those things are discussed. The, the prospectus really had a lot of um, state and federal grant funding in it, um, which, I, which I thought was a pretty high number. So that's one question, where exactly are those funds coming from? I don't really have a specific timeline, but I could have it as as early as uh, tomorrow or as soon as I can touch base with Anda. So, okay, all right. Any questions for Terry? The the, the gentleman from from uh, North Carolina yesterday stayed at our hotel one night and they, this week, and we're asking if there was any place else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's kind of an old story. I said soon. Yeah. Oh, it's soon. So. And uh, Rochester Metal actually, uh, Brad actually called me today and, and asked what the potential for getting some new housing and apartments, and apartments specifically. He's like, one of the problems we're having with hiring people is they don't have a, you know, there's not a diversity of housing in the community. So I was like, as a matter of fact, I've got a plan here for proof. Uh, you know, I can't really put numbers out there, but uh, phase one is over 130 uh, rooms in an apartment. Pretty big project, big number on it. So, working through it right now. Mr. Kersey was really pulling his hair out over the labor <coughs> situation and the uh, the market out there, how slim it is. Yeah, Bill said yesterday at the, uh, he's the director of manufacturing, he said yesterday at the chamber luncheon that they would hire 30 or 40 right now if they could find people. Yeah. Okay, any questions for Terry? Thanks, Terry. You're welcome.
change going in place as to what will be allowed in using the diving board. Uh, and the uh, lifeguards will be instructed as such. So, so that was that was a pretty pretty in-depth discussion. We had uh, Bob Hoffman, our safety uh, coordinator, do a rather in-depth study of not only the accident, what had happened. That was pretty much the heart of the meeting. Um, Marty's not here. Solid Waste and Animal Adoption Center. Todd? Both of those groups have moved to meetings every other month, so we did not have a meeting this month. You had an easy month? Okay. Uh, tree Board and EMS, Brian. Tree Board met on August 5th. All the members were there. Uh, since there's been changes of members through the years, I'll just let everyone know who is on the board now. John Bowers, Matt Frank, Jim Mulligan, Eric Binnier. Good group. Yeah, oh yeah. And there's a, good news, there's another a company that was in the area, I guess a, a newer company, so they may be able to, maybe some of the initial bidders for the, the, the contracts that we have, so that'd be good. Trade uh, removal contracts. Competition's always good. One, I think one or both of the guys are arborists, which is something that we're looking to contact out to them. Or two or just they were there. Uh, the, the current contract, they were a little behind on some of the things. I think I mentioned in the last meeting, they were a little behind. Uh, part of it was they couldn't get parts for their grinder. Everything else is waiting for the parts to come in. So hopefully they're planning to be done by the end of July. Uh, they talk about being done that the week after the meeting, so hopefully they're done by now. That was for the stump removal. Yes, yeah, something. Well, the trees and the stumps too. Oh, but right here for the trees. No, for the stumps. Stumps. But, yeah. But yeah. part of the contract is once the tree comes down, right. get the stump done. Yeah. But with no parts, they're stumped. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Little, little tree you are. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Timber. Timber. Usually more than these. Tree boy. Yeah, there you go. No. Uh, yeah, the, and I, we had a, a kickoff meeting for the, uh, the inventory project on the 17th. I planned to attend, but something came up and I was not able to attend. So hopefully it all went well. Next meeting is September 16th. Yeah. Uh, those of you who saw the newspaper uh, this past week, we had uh, uh, the company in who's doing the uh, the audit, the inventory audit of all the trees throughout town. We also included uh, the parks as well. And uh, we will end up, when this is all completed, with a nice GIS software program that will have every tree identified and located in, uh, in town and in our parks and also the condition of it and we'll be able to academically the park board will be able to academically keep uh, uh, inventory and uh, control and uh, we have uh, saddled uh, the park board with keeping that up and working uh, a, a system with our citizens as well as our staff uh, plus Duke, anybody else who interfaces with the trees to make sure we keep the system very accurate once we have it in place. Uh, this was possible through the efforts of Eric Bittinger who, oh we're so privileged to have him on the tree board. He works for the DNR. My gosh, there isn't anything about the tree he doesn't know. And, you know, if you want to ask him a question, be prepared to find out how trees first started. Okay, he knows it all. And uh, he was instrumental in helping us put together and get a grant uh, from the uh, DNR and the feds to uh, put this program in place. So we're looking forward to it. it sounded Indiana pretty Department nifty, didn't Forestry and the U.S. Forestry. Pardon me? The Indiana Department of Forestry and the U.S. US forestry. forestry. Yes. Because we have to make sure we get that public information out there. So there'll be some public, some press releases coming out. 
kind of warning citizens of when these guys will be around. You'll see some safety vests and uh, pat, uh, tablets as they go around inventorying everything. So if you see somebody in front of your house and they've got a tablet and their vehicle should be clearly marked that they're with uh, Lake. Yeah, Lake. Uh, Great Lakes. Great Lakes. Urban. Urban development. Forestry Development, I believe. Yeah. It's a very long name, so we just call them Great Lakes. <laughs> but they'll be in, they won't be here until after Labor Day, correct? Right. Yeah. So after Labor Day, you'll see them milling around the city with tablets and vests on and yeah. checking all the trees out. And if you see someone who doesn't have all that equipment and nomenclature and they're taking notes and pictures and everything, they're probably just casing your <laughs> call Andy. Yes, call, Andy. Call, Andy. call Andy. Call Andy's shots. Call Andy's shots. No, act, actually, you know, they, they went to, uh, these folks went to great detail to tell us, to tell us what their personnel would look like because, you know, we've had folks come through the community that weren't, you know, they weren't casing the house, but they didn't look very official. And we get calls. And some of them would be the utility. Duke had uh, an independent contractor coming through taking the condition of the poles. Boy, he had a beard down to here and didn't have anything official on him, no badger, and, and was taking pictures. Oh, my gosh, somebody is in my yard taking <laughs> pictures. So, you know, it raises a concern. So the, these folks, then they were very professional to tell us how this would be handled. We were appreciative. Okay, Brian, EMS? Oh. I don't know. Okay, sorry, you said, you said that, didn't you? <laughs> no, I didn't know. Is there anything else with the tree board? No, nothing else with the tree board. <laughs> yeah, nothing else with EMS. Water board. John. Yes, uh, Chase, don't feel bad. I didn't read the water board. <laughs> but I did read. I did read the, the minutes of the water board. And the most important thing is that anybody needs to know about the water board. Everything's running well at the water park. They're just keeping it going great. Everything's running smooth. The meeting was short. And uh, that's about all I have to say about it. Did you have anything you wanted to add, Derek? Nope. Oh. <laughs> sure, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Smart man. Point yeah. cover. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we don't have any ADA concerns. Uh, anything from the legal department? Uh, just briefly uh, for the council members, uh, the state of Indiana has tweaked the uh, open door law with regard to remote meetings and how that's going to work in the future. We've all kind of gotten a taste of that during uh, during COVID, and there's a there's a set of restrictions uh, that apply when uh, uh, we're not in a state of emergency, local or otherwise. And since we are still now, those don't apply. But eventually, the, the shorthand version. This. When we're not in a state of emergency, uh, members of a governing body will still be able to participate remotely. Uh, um, uh, there are some conditions on it. You have to be able to be seen and heard by the public. Um, and uh, uh, any vote then has to be a roll call vote, and the minutes will need to reflect who voted. Okay? And there are restrictions about you know you can't you can't do more than 50% of your meetings that way. But if you're you know if you're traveling and you don't want to miss a meeting. Um, the city can arrange for you to participate remotely, and your appearance counts towards quorum. Your vote counts as a vote. Uh, uh, but, but, uh, and I won't go into all the restrictions about it. But for now, we're still under state of emergency, and so it's even kind of more permissive than, than usual. But I think in the long term, as as uh, uh, people people who serve on one board tend to get asked eventually to serve on some other board, and I don't know if for most of you this is probably not the first to go around with some civic service. And I think it is changing the culture. COVID is, is changing the culture in a permanent way about how accepting uh, the state is, how accepting the public is of, of some level of remote participation. So I think just uh, um, I can I can fill in more details as, as those come up. But for right now, we are still under the state of emergency, and so uh, you could have had the entire meeting rolling if you wanted to. Um, but um, uh, even going forward, once we're out of that, I say this now because. As COVID numbers increase, if if uh, we get to a point where only two of you can come in person, 
but others feel well enough to, to call in, you legitimately can still have a meeting. Okay. And so it's not a, a it's it's not something that simply will be completely discarded even once the state of emergency is over. So just keep that in mind. Do you say you said we need to be um, video or just audio? When when it goes into place, uh, as when there's not a state of emergency, uh, uh, the normal rule of the statute is you need to be both. You need to be seen and heard uh, and as as if you were you were here. And also, uh, if it if it is purely uh, via Zoom, let's say we're, we're teleconferencing the entire meeting, obviously there has to be uh, uh, meaningful participation for the public to observe all that. It doesn't okay. change it into a public hearing. They're still there to observe. But I know you've got some of that set up already okay. to do that. Do that. But, but it's going to be more than just a COVID-only thing. Some, we're going to see some remnants of that uh, uh, last on for a while as part of the ABA. Let's hope we don't have to get too deep into those weeds. Uh, I do know one thing, man, with all the uncertainty and the things about uh, statutes and what we can do and can't do regarding meetings. I just hope you don't get sick. You know, we, we certainly call on you lots to research these things, and I thank you much for that. The changes are interesting. I'd rather not be the test case. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes. Well said. Well said. Do I have uh, any other thing for the council? For the our meeting, you know, so we can discuss our. Since you have Eric here. <laughs> well, okay. For the first payout, we'll have ten thousand well, dollars. We've got to figure out what to do with the rest of it. That's a time limit, right? No. Um, what I was wanting to do was actually establish a date so that we can formulate the plan and actually right. put the plan together. As far as the. 50,000 for the health department, that's okay. We, that's already taken care of. This is more getting a study session date okay. that we can include Eric or Tyler or whoever you want to send. I didn't, I didn't have that on my oh, I'm, I'm I, No, you're fine. Mm -hmm. you can't have that. There's another one laying up there somewhere that we should okay. Ruth probably stole it. Well, Ted. Uh, right now she's Ted and Kay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did! <laughs> you can thank John for that. the only one. That's the only one. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, what's, uh, what's September look like to you folks? It's going to be warm. It's going to be warm. If you go with protocol, technically you guys will look at September 14th. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, my, my yeah. question is, do you guys want to keep it later or earlier? Yeah. Earlier would be better for me. Okay. Because I, I don't get busy until later. Just to, what, what time, I mean, what time do you guys want? I, I'm only asking because selfishly, um, so because it's not talking to town. So, we just want to know whether we don't make it or not. There it is. Okay. Okay, so, so, uh, I, 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 so yes. what time is it? Yes. Yes. How, how about 4 o'clock <laughs> on the 14th? Everybody made that? 4 o'clock on the 14th? Eric? Did you make that? Eric, does that work for you? Yeah. That's 4 o'clock. Would you like Attorney Perkins here as well? Sure. Are if you he's... available? Uh, 4 o'clock, I think I can do. That's fine. Yeah, I think yeah. all those guys would prefer to keep it under 60 minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We will uh, we'll make sure the uh, we just won't let Ted come and it'll go really quick. <laughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, yes. <laughs> We're adjourned. Thank you all. Who's second? Yes, I did. 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 I